pro tem for this session in the absence of Judge Woody Gosling? Commissioner Mueller, I'd make a motion that we uh, elect you as uh, Judge pro tem today. Second. Got a second. All in, all in favor, I'd say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. I will serve as Judge pro tem this morning. Welcome. We're going to open with our uh, invocation. And Commissioner Watts, I believe you've got that. Yes, I do. John uh, Gillespie, I've asked this morning to come and open our uh, meeting with prayer. And John, I was, I, I thought last <coughs> week, and I was going to um, make mention of a super uh, dog that I had and in, 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 in the correlation between how he responds to, um, for me, and how you do for this county so well. But... I changed all of that. <laughs> Where are we going with this? <laughs> well, I, I changed all of that on Friday when I heard the most incredible story that I've heard in a very long time. And I, I'm just here to tell you that uh, I, I'm a firm believer that God directs our steps and he puts us where he intends us to be. And so with that, John, I thank you for coming this morning. And, and if you would, just grab a mic right there and and open us in prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, come before you today. We commit this proceeding to you. We thank you for your goodness to us, uh, for the rain that you've sent. Um, in the last um, decade, we know what it's like to be without rain, and so we thank you for the rain this weekend. And we just ask that you would um, give us your wisdom and that you would bless these proceedings. We commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You'll join me in honoring this republic with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the pledge to the Texas flag, please. I honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Be seated, please. John, thank you very much. I was wondering how we were going to work out of insulting the entire creation. <laughs> <laughs> Comparing them to a dog. Yeah. We, got, we got that. We got that. We got that done. So that's a good thing. Uh, let's uh, move on to the consent agenda. Are any presentations this morning? We have any? Nancy, we have any? Today? I will make one note, and I was going to save this for the, uh, the uh, public comments, but I'll be attending the celebration at the Love Sanctuary Church of God in Christ uh, tonight over on Fort Worth Street and uh, offering them a proclamation from this court for a hundred years of service in our community. Uh, Pastor Ed Downing over there will be officiating. They've got an entire week of celebrations, but tonight is uh, what they call a civic night, and they're going to be uh, receiving honors from the city and the county and others, and we look forward to that celebration tonight at 7 o'clock over at uh, 700 Fort Worth Street. So looking forward to that. Moving consent agenda. Uh, anything to uh, pull up from the consent agenda? Yes, uh, Judge, if I could uh, remove, I'd like to hold back the uh, item 11 okay. for just uh, some additional work and let us replace uh, it at a later time. Later time, you'll pull it off? Please. Okay, anything else, Commissioner? I haven't seen anything. If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Watts. Do I have a second? Second. Got a second by Commissioner Beecham. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say uh, no. And the ayes have it. Consent agenda will pass with the exception of number 11, which we pull down for further study. Moving to general business, would you approve the emergency and regular bills for payment? After reviewing the bills on Friday, I make the motion that we approve them, both the emergency and regular bills for payment. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Beats and second by Commissioner Watts. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And that'll pass 4 0. Discussing review jail maintenance projects and work orders. Did I see the email that said we did not have roof leaks during the current storm? Can that be possible? <laughs> yes, Is this, we might ought to have our own celebration. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. And, and the thing of it is, we're not expecting it to leak because we just spent a lot of money to get it fixed, but that is good news. So, so let's talk about our jail maintenance project and work orders. Uh, who's going to do that? Very yeah. good. Andrew? I was out last week, but Captain Patterson was uh, more than 
efficient in tracking all of that. But I got back this morning and we have zero open work orders. 41 got completed last week. Um, nothing really to speak of, just normal, normal business. We're about to get to the point where it's going to be fix them as they come, and that's good. That's what we want. I think we're already we're already there. You know, um, things pop up. They do, they do more um, on site <coughs> non work orders than they do work orders. And we're going to and we're going to continue to have work orders. I don't know what the normal number will be, but this might be pretty close to what we'll have to deal with in a in a week yeah. period. And we have we have our, our seasons during the months. You know, in the beginning of the months they start their inspection, so they find more things. But towards the end of the month, it just starts getting lower. Um, I think two weeks ago we had 70 some odd uh, work repairs done, and this week we have 41. It's just the nature of the beast. Beginning of the month, it's high, end of the month, it's low. Well, the great thing is, is when you get to this point, you can be more proactive, and that's mm -hmm. that's always a good thing. Yes, sir. Commissioners, any questions, comments? Yep, Captain Patterson, since it's going to be a couple of years, don't you think we ought to go ahead and install those countertops in the control room at the annex? Think we ought to do that? They're ready. Yeah, they're ready. Just if we can just coordinate with IT. Those are terrible. There's no sense in those guys dealing with that for another two years till we yeah, get there. Okay. And the good news is IT guys don't have anything going on. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, do I have a uh, a motion to approve the uh, maintenance project work orders? So moved. Got a motion from Commissioner Watts. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second. And uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. I think that's the first time we've ever voted on that. Uh, <laughs> well, it's mainly, it's, it's, it's like a financial deal just to file it, except yeah. it just recognize that you did it. I don't know that it's a it's a formal deal. Let's move to item number three, discuss, consider, take action to approve a quote from SKC Communications for Polycom uh, Real Presence Video Project 500 system. And this was for the jail annex, not the grand jury room. At an estimated cost of $9,618.06, including freight costs with payment by transfer from 100.409.5001, capital expenditures, the line department 426, grand jury is assigned by the county auditor. Somebody want to speak to this? Uh, yeah. Actually, is this your item? Well, and I want to be clear, this is for the grand jury? No, sir. This is, there was some mix up, Nancy and I had miscommunication. Oh, okay. Uh, it's for the gel annex. Okay. Um, over the past, uh, how long would you say? Six months, maybe? Yeah. I mean, since the beginning. We've but had issues since we put the Polycom in the attorney booth. So since the actual attorney booth was built out there at the, uh, the gel annex, we've constantly had issues with the acoustics in the room. Of course, it's a concrete room. Um, the way it's separated out, uh, the inmate sits on one side, the polycom sits on the other. Uh, the unit itself has a microphone, and at first we had the microphone on the, uh, the polycom side where the TV is. Uh, so what it was doing was creating a reverb back through there. It was picking up, the mic was picking up what the TV speakers were pushing out, so it had major issues. Um, so we decided, well, let's put the mic over on the inmate side. So Shep and their guys drilled holes and ran us the mic over. We mounted it right above where the inmate sits. That helped a little, but it, it just it really didn't fix the issue. So it's constant, it's constant reverb back and forth. You can hear what the other person's saying through the mic. It comes to the TV. So uh, now I guess it's gotten to the point where it's almost impossible for uh, attorneys to hear their client. Um, we have. We've tried almost everything. They've stuck acoustic tiles in there trying to fix the situation. Um, so we have the same issue that happens at the main jail here. For whatever reason, this one just seems to be worse, I would assume, because of the size of the room and the height of the ceiling. Uh, the one here is a much smaller room, and it does have some plexiglass in there to help. But uh, I spoke with our SKC rep about the issues we were having. Uh, this is a known problem in jails due to how they're built and the echo of things. Um, so Nancy gave you a handout, uh, showed you a picture of what this unit is. Um, it's called a Protect 500, and it is designed specifically for uh, judicial type situations, jails, um, they use them in the prisons. It is a completely encased uh, unit itself individual pieces so there's a screen in there there's a camera in there and then if you notice there's an actual telephone off to the side 
So there is not an open speaker or mic that the person has to talk into. All the sound goes through the telephone. So it would be just like being on a visitation phone, talking on your phone. They would hear through the earpiece of the handset, talk into the actual phone itself. This will eliminate any sort of echo, any sort of reverb whatsoever, uh, because like I said, you're talking directly into the phone. Uh, I did, of course, speak with the SKC and made sure, you know, when we move forward with the jail, is this something that can be moved? And of course, absolutely, all it does is hang on the wall. Uh, it requires a network drop and a phone drop. Um, I would like to proceed with this to resolve the issue that they're having now, but also to test it out for the future to see if this is something we want to proceed with when we do the new jail, and if it is, then we can design these rooms to accommodate this type of technology, um, and then that way we can make, make sure this solution works for us. Now, does this uh, ash tie into our new phone RFP that we did, or is this a phone no, no, provider? Sir. <laughs> no, sir. This is our actually county-owned system, our video conferencing that we use. Um, so this actually, well, this unit is used in two different situations. Uh, the public defender, well, I guess technically three. The public defender will uh, use it to communicate with their inmate. Um, the judges in our surrounding areas, courthouse, if they're here, Judge B. Botney, if she's in Burke, if they have a particular hearing with just an inmate, they will put that inmate in that attorney booth and read their rights and do the hearing there. And then also when we uh, get the new system up and running where we'll have the avail availability for outside attorneys to dial in, to speak with her inmate instead of having to come down to the courthouse, <coughs> this unit will be used for that also. So with this item, we're getting one of these boxes? Yes, sir, plus three years of maintenance and warranty. Okay. And I did actually look at the inside of this. The phone itself is a separate piece. So if someone gets mad and rips the phone off, it just pulls the, the cables out of the box. It doesn't actually destroy the inside pieces of the unit. So it would just be, you know, a phone or not actually having to replace the entire insides. And so if you have that video going from remote locations, how does it work for, say, Judge Viavotny, and how does she see the inmate, or does she? She does. So there's a camera built in that also. So there's a screen and a camera. So on her end, she would see the inmate, and then on his end, he would see the judge, okay. or she. And she's looking at it through her desktop? Uh, she has a polycom unit currently at her facility oh, okay. uh, that she uses at her desk. Okay. Actually, on our current stuff, it's existing okay. stuff, could you not resolve the reverb echo problem just by wearing headphones? Well, you have to have a mic. Um, right. But if you're wearing headphones, nothing gets back to the mic. That's You follow what I'm saying? We do that at the recording studio. You, you alleviate all that by just wearing headphones. That's something you might look at on, on the stuff that we have here. Okay. I, I guess I'll have to get with you and, and see, because I'm not sure how that would work. You're talking about putting headphones on the... On the prisoner and the, the, yeah. and, the, and the attorney. Okay. The, the headphones. The device itself is not wired for that. Oh. So okay. it's a... Doesn't even have an opportunity box. to do no, that. No, it's a box that, sits, that has all these different connections. It, so it has a TV that hooks, it runs sound. Uh, so you have an input and an output, and, and so that, that box isn't designed that way. Okay, well, if there's not a place to plug yeah. in headphones, you can yeah. throw that window out the, out the door. And you don't want to put a lot of stuff in there to be torn at? Right? No, sir, absolutely not. <laughs> Which is part of the reason why it's separated the way it is now. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, the, the unit that's in there now is never designed to be in any sort of jail. I mean, it's, you know, it's this big stand with this big monitor, and it's more of a a roll around, put in your conference room type situation. But when we initially bought those, they had not come out with this solution. So we had to try to adapt to so our- by doing the phone, we'll put, say, a couple hundred bucks at risk rather than $9,000. Correct. Risk, or, yeah. okay. Well, I like this because it has the potential for outside dialing. Yes, sir. And, and like I said, we get to mess with it and, and see if this is a solution we want to use moving forward, and, and we can Did design these rooms. Did our RFP vendor not have a similar option? 
the R2 vendor that we, we selected? This is, the, this is not a okay. for the phones. Well, I understand that, but then they don't have a similar unit in, in their list of options that would do the video conferencing much the same way this one does? That did it for their uh, video visitation. Mm -hmm. Uh, that would be a, a different uh, system altogether. Okay. Any other questions? So we will change from grand jury, we will strike grand jury room and put jail annex, and I would assume we've got to change the funding line. Yes, it will Willie, say, it you know, still say 100 for one capital expenditures for line determined by the that the department will change, will it not? Won't be 426? 561 jail. 561, okay. So we'll, y'all note those changes. And Judge, I'll make that motion. A motion by Commissioner Watts. We have a second. Got a second by Commissioner Beatson. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And it's four of it passes. Thank you, Thank you Ashley. Uh, item number four, discuss, consider, take action to approve quote from Bob Barker in the amount of $10,239.90 for inmate uniforms to be paid from 100.561.3506 clothing supplies to line as determined by the county auditor. Who's going to speak to that? Sure. Or, oh, okay. Captain Johnson, please. Captain Johnson. Is this a budgeted item? Is this a budgeted item in your budget? Uh, we have a budget line for linens, free intimate linens, but we don't have that much in that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is. Okay. There's enough in our floating one to cover it. There is. Mm -hmm. I just got off the elevator and I met a inmate that uh, was pushing the cart. And I told Mr. Easter, I said, man, you need to give him some new clothes. They're terrible. That's kind of odd. That just happened. Sometimes with commissioner, those, those guys, because of the materials they're working with, varnish, paint, uh, cleaning, they'll wear the older ones. They've been clean, but they look, you know. Well, they were clean. They were just. You know, but sometimes it's, it's easier to utilize them over and over because they're going to ruin them instead of giving a fresh set every week and just go through 10 pairs a week. Sure. So I get the work clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What is the, I mean, is the 10239 is that the increase or is that the complete amount or what's in the budget and what are we changing? Do you know? We're not changing anything, but anything over a thousand that's to come to court can be approved even if we have the money in the budget. And Margaret said the the clothing line had plenty of money in it. Oh okay. So we're approving it because it's a larger amount. Yes sir. Any other questions or discussion? So moved. Got a motion? Yes sir. Got second. Got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, and it will pass for zero. Moving on to number five, discuss, consider, and take action to change Wichita County's credit card administration program from Postel Credit Union to American National Bank to increase the pre-funded amount for Wichita County employee travel and other departmental expenses. Deb, are you going to speak to that? Would you get a mic, please? The people watching us on TV can't hear you. Yeah. And they want to. Postal Credit Union is doing away with their current program, and it will have some different kinds of requirements that the county wasn't willing to accept, requiring personal Social Security numbers and that kind of thing. Um, so we contacted American National Bank, and they are the county's depository bank, and they have a program that we can slide right into. And it's called a zero balance account. And it, so for all intents and purposes, we'll just move the post Hill program to American National Bank. So all the accounts will stay the same, all the limits will stay the same, and all that. It's just that it will work differently in that the commissioner's court, should you all choose to go this way, will approve the amounts that we have now as limits on each of the accounts. And I gave you a piece of paper that, that explanation had all those. So the main county account has $27,000 of uh, credit limits in it. The sheriff has three different accounts and they all have varying amounts of limits. The district attorney's office has a, um, all the departments that have a budget greater than two and a half million have accounts. So 
the um, district attorney's office, juvenile, and the sheriff's office all have their own separate credit card accounts, separate from the main county account that the auditor's office um, manages. The sum of all of those limits together is $55,000. And so what will happen is the county will it'll act kind of like a debit card. So the county is going to move that amount of money, the 55000 to each of these zero balance accounts. And then they will be able to charge against that. In addition to the zero balance amount that the county will pre-fund, which we think will be plenty, we've never gone over any of those limits on any of those cards. Um, but should we have some run, we will also have a uh, line of credit attached to those zero balance accounts. And if we run into using that line of credit, there would be an interest charge. But I don't foresee that we will get into that kind of situation. We're able to monitor the accounts online. Uh, the, all the departments will be able to monitor their accounts online. And so they'll be able to uh, see if they're going to get in, into a position where they would need. And then we can just go ahead and pay whatever bills they have handy. Um, at that point in time, we could go ahead and you know send a check in to reduce the balance so they have greater utilization of it. So basically, the operation is going to stay the same. We're just changing providers. That is correct. And we will um, meet with each of the offices individually. And we should have their cards tomorrow and meet individually with each of those um, people that manage those accounts within those other offices and go over the procedures. But they're basically the same. So well, question. Oh, go ahead. Um, like when we got down to our conference and our card was denied or something maxed out. maxed out or something so moving forward it, the charge will be accepted by American National Bank it won't be denied but we'll pay interest on that money that would that be correct, correct. yeah and, and that was a different situation on your card but okay. so when we the transport is in Houston delivering or picking up and they call Margaret or Jill and say my card won't work that, that'll basically go away. Yes. That would be awesome. And regardless, Deb, there's an interest charge when you exceed those balances, or are they exempt if you're paid within the 30-day period? As long as we stay within the zero funded, the zero balance amount, there's no interest charge. That money doesn't earn interest, but, you know, that's... Right. We're funding our own credit card. Yes. Well, that takes care of the... Well, that was my question, if we needed to adjust any balances, but if we have the ability to, to uh, override when there's the need to push the limits for whatever reason occurs, then we would be okay, and it would really eliminate the need to watch those caps on there as well. Yes, but we, won't, we don't want to get into an interest situation. So if we saw that... But right now, everybody's got a high enough balance that they're not coming close on their balances. And so we, we, we've, you know, raised them, you know, over and over. The commissioner's court has approved raising those balances. So they should be okay. And with the online access, uh, that should be easier with this. Then the, all the departments that have cards will monitor theirs and if we should get close. So we don't get into using that line of credit. But. Deb, are those lines set according to the budget for travel? Is that how you do that, or how do you arrive at those balances? I mean, that was just kind of what um, historical, or yeah. yeah, you know. So we set them at a certain amount, like when the sheriff got their credit card, and it, then they had more people traveling at one time, so they needed it increased. I think same for the DA. That one went up. The main county card, you know, when we found that we had we have peak times of travel. So in the spring and in the fall, you know, everybody's conferences are in April, May, or September, October. And so we, at that point, we have quite a few people out traveling. So this, those limits typically will take care of those highest peak periods. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Uh, Maureen did ask the first be raised to 15 instead of 11 5. Well, uh, and uh, that was a good question uh, as well, Deb. Like yours is 27. Why aren't those 30 and, and why aren't this one rounded? Um, they, does it just happen to get there? I mean, yeah. You know, when we probably had something go over and 
Uh, I'm not sure on the other departments' cards because we don't manage those, but probably they went over and called the um, postal and they temporarily raised it and then the commissioner's court affirmed it. That's typically how that happened. I how would you go about raising those limits, bring it as, a, as an agenda item for the court or yeah. contact you or what would be? We would come back to court to, to raise because it would have to be the pre-funded amount would have to be increased. So we wouldn't not, do it here on this that's transaction. What, yeah, that was my question. Do we do that as part of this action? Or well, you could if separately? you wanted. Yeah, it's just that we would commit um, an additional thirty-five hundred dollars in the. So it go to it's fifty-six right now, and it'd be fifty-nine-five. And Margaret, I'd ask you the same question. I mean, those. Uh, of course, this gives us a lot more flexibility than what we had uh, have in have had in the past, but. Those balances, yours are. Uh, Off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact balances, but I know we've raised them enough where you've not had any trouble at all. And I can go online and see what they're doing. And I have been on Postel at any point. And if something was, you know, if something just doubled, because usually the doubling over the month is kind of what does it. And I've always been able to just send some hotel bills or whatever over to the auction office, and they go ahead and make an early payment. To stop any of that from happening. I've not had any trouble since the last time we raised any Well, I looked at one of those cards with 75, Deb. Uh, they have a big card. Of course, they're far different functions. One was as low as 25. I and think that's transport, and that usually stays really low, and then we have the training, which is probably our highest, and then just our general post if we need to go get something. Supplies and such. Business. Yeah, that the Sheriff's Department total has 15,000. Okay. So five seventy-five and twenty-five. Okay. Well, uh, Judge, I'd make that motion then that we accept this uh, transaction, move to American National, raise Deb's limit to thirty as well as Maureen's to fifteen to match the sheriff. You got a motion on the floor? Do we have a second? Yes, second. Second. You got a motion and second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And that will pass four zero. Item number six: Discuss, consider, take action to file Texas Association of Counties Risk Management Pool Invoice Number eighteen eight forty four in the amount of one hundred fourteen thousand six hundred twenty nine dollars, or as changed by uh, exercise of deduction options with the county auditor for property coverage for the period of July one two thousand seventeen to July one two thousand eighteen, with payment from one hundred point four zero nine point forty four eighteen property insurance. I had uh, responded to Willie's um, questions on here. I, in an effort to reduce uh, spending, had thought that we consider the $75,000 deduction and lower by nearly $10,000 a year our insurance premium. Yeah, I had looked at that also. What would it go to? Go from 75 to, to 105, yeah. wasn't it, Willie? If, if we did the $75,000 uh, deductible. And in just a short period of time, if we could be so lucky, we'll pay for that deduction um, increase. So, But it did, would be a reduction. This is about a $2,000 increase over where we were. And um, unfortunately, it's never a good thing to have to give up some, but in an, in an effort to reduce expenses, I, I would make the motion that we go with the $75,000 deductible. All right, gentlemen, you heard the motion to go to $75,000 deductible. I second that motion. You got a second by uh, Commissioner Harvey. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. And that will pass 4 0 to move the $75,000 deduction. Item number seven, discuss, consider, and or take action on outstanding construction issues at the firing range. And we are so fortunate that we got the berms protected before last week and we would have had a mess on our hands. But thank goodness it worked out. Absolutely. The timing was excellent. Well, Glenda, are you here to speak on this? No, not necessarily. Uh, Judge Bassam asked that I be here to answer questions should y'all have any. Okay. But I okay. have nothing to report. I'm just Okay. Where, where are we? The building set. 
Okay. Give us an update. All right. We got with uh, Randy Elliott, and he's back there, Randy. Yeah, he's here. Uh, Randy, were you able to get a hold of uh, All Red? I have talked with them, yes. Uh, they're going to kind of wait to see where we're going, what materials, what we're going to do. I think we all got to get together and figure out exactly what the county's portion is. Because we learned last week we couldn't put in the ADA bathroom. It has to be done by plumbers that's already hired by the construction company. That's what Matt told me. And we went back in there well, and I think after everybody left, he said, He's just talking about the plumbing part of that? He was talking the whole bathroom. The, the construction we, we do not need to have a licensed plumber build two before walls and put sheetrock on it. I'm, okay. What Matt said well, I think he may have misunderstood what he said. Not going to do that anyway. That's, That's my point. That. Yeah, the, they're just talking about the actual plumbing part. Plumbing you have to be a licensed plumber to to run the piping. Maybe what we need to get together: Who, who's okay. going to build the wall and who's going to install? ADA part of it. I know they finished one of them, I believe, or moved one around. We got to have two because of both genders. I don't know if we're going to have to have a third gender or not. Yeah. I mean, well, there are now 57 genders. So. There's just yeah. a many of them out there. <laughs> but we, we know we have to have the two, male and female. And it right. doesn't have to be ADA compliant. Right. Uh, and that's kind of where we're at. Is what we need to build inside. I know we need to clean it up. We need to start putting. We got to get the ceiling tiles back in it, and Archer's going to do our electrical work. Archer's going to do the electrical work. Yes. Yep. I didn't know whether we had to redo it. We knew we talked to him about moving that panel inside out there that day. He said he had agreed to do that. I believe. I believe that's correct. Uh, we I haven't seen a quote from Archer yet right. on just getting the lighting and everything. Um, I say. think all he liked was throwing the power to that plus moving that one panel, that basic panel that operates the target. Right. And the light down, down Has the Kevin placed the buildings where we want them? And they're, they're set. tied back they're, together? They're set. They're tied in. The plumbing tied in. I think the water's, water's in now. Uh, we got to build it. Like you said, we got to build that one half wall or three quarter wall in that one room to move that other restroom in there, mm -hmm. which will make it ADA compliant. And it's big enough room that we didn't have to construct a whole whole brand new room and move everything three quarters away across the building. Right. Closer and cheaper or as the plumbing and everything. How yeah. are the buildings underpinned? That we well, haven't that's, got that. We haven't done the underpinning yet. Yes, that's another discussion. Well we're gonna do the underpinning. I know we in, are inmate labor. Right. Okay. But that's one of the things we need to make sure we we're gonna take on as much as inmate labor, construction, everything. Well, Randy was gonna to talk to All Red because they have people who are actual right. craftsmen out there that are not just, and just weekend warriors. Give them a green light on what projects we need them out there for what day. The okay. biggest the biggest question I think we have actually is is when we start ordering something, we wanna make sure that it goes through you that you know what the county's gonna have to pay well, for what time. Randy and I were talking about what type of underpinning that we right. would wanna put on that and uh, we gotta get some uh, ADA uh, ramps made, uh, built for the handicapped wheelchair folks. We've got to get a concrete entrance poured on. South side. Well, it's the west side, whatever that. North. Is it north side or south side? You're talking about the sidewalk or the entrance walk? No, the entrance way to the parking lot. Oh, okay. The entrance way to the parking lot. And we've got to get some sidewalks poured. Um, of course, we'll do that with concrete companies. Um, you got to have a sidewalk goes all the way to the fire line, you know, just in case there's somebody in a wheelchair they can't drive through the gravel. So um, we've got to get landscaping done. Uh, as soon as the parking lot is uh, chip sealed, we're going to take and remove little islands in it and uh, put our landscaping in there as required by the city. Uh, and that can be done and make labor. Yeah, it, it can be. We can go to Wolf Nursery and get, get some stuff, but we have it has to be approved. Do you know, we what, have what we're it has doing. to be approved and sprinkled? Yeah. Do we have, or Glenda, do you have a itemized yet uh, to be done list that has some projection numbers on it? I mean, 
there's a lot of left out there to do that we're assuming. It's a bunch of ankle biting stuff. That's, that's kind of what me and Chief Choke was talking about. Hey, what is left there for us to do? Let's get together and say, hey, this is done. And knowing that the court's going to say, hey, y'all do that and support us when we're doing it. We, we don't want to go out here and buy something and say, oh, hell, yeah, we're not going to do that. You know. Well, you wouldn't buy anything until we agreed upon it and first. That, yeah, but that's what huh. I mean. we got to figure out what we got to get to get prices on, like the underpin. We know we got to get prices on underpin. we got to have two ADA handicap ramps coming in right. with landings on And if you provide the carpenter from Allred, then we're just going to go buy our, our lumber from the lumber yeah, yard. Yeah, whether it's Allred or whether we do it ourselves. I mean, right. that, that's the thing. If it's out of metal or something, maybe the guy at the sheriff's department can build that thing. Well, we we talked about building it out of womanized lumber. On the top, yeah, on the right, wood. Right, on the wood, you, yeah. You can't build your, you're not going to build your roof. No, I mean, the awning. It's going to be metal, so that's most correct. of your framing would be metal works. I mean, because once you come up with one frame for your roof, that'd be half your frame for your... Well, you can do your, you your can floor. do your studs out of 4 by 4 post. Yeah. You know. But should we not... Uh, simply finish the buildings or I'm talking about the outside with the underpinning and then come back in when the jail is uh, under construction and maybe wainscoat or rock around the bottom or whatever to tie into we we don't want to look really out good. beside it that is completely odd to what the new facility is going to look like and so, do it with trim. Yeah, which is you know the perfect way to tie it, tie it together. And instead of spending a great deal right away on putting the buildings exactly how we would think they'd look sharp, wait until we know what the facade is going to be on the building, and then well, we have no ahead. intention of rocking the the building. It is a trailer house. Well, I'm talking Metal. about the underpinning area. You know, if you put the partial rock up so far, it just gives them a more professional look and a more durable. We don't want them to look like a modular home stuck out there beside that's, our $70 million jail facility. That's what it is. I mean, that's what it is. I, know, I mean, it looks like it, what it is. That's we, what it is. We want to at least tie it in so it has some flow and connectivity and at least well, look uniform. Okay, Here, here's the deal, Commissioner Watts. We don't know what the facade of the jail is going to look well, like that's exactly my point. right now. That's my point. And, and we need to go ahead and get it underpinned because we got two winners to go Absolutely. through. Okay, Absolutely. Okay, okay, that's what I was getting at. We've got to underpin that trailer and get the pipes wrapped. And get it, I mean, you can come back later sure. and, and put yeah, something and on that's it. that's what but I think. We, the, we don't need to even consider yeah. rock or anything right no, now. We just need an underpin. Yeah, that's the point. And, and right. Nothing else. I coordinated by color. Sure. I mean, that, that'd be the first step to, to the new building. What color is the new building going to be? When the new building is built. That's oh, you're talking about <laughs> coming back. That's the point yeah. we're trying yeah. to make. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about that right now. We just if get I us some money. I Commissioner Watts is saying, let's don't go spend a bunch, bunch of money, money. Yeah, on we're the not. building. Because we can come back and retrofit it later to, to make it match. To blend in right. so that it all has the same that, appearance. That's the point we're trying to make. So. All right. So we're on the same page. We're not going to yeah. go rock the bottom of the no, building or anything. No, no, no. no. We're <laughs> okay. going to paint. We're going to paint the bathroom. We'll get that. We need to go there. We'll we need to get started. I really like the, I do, the uh, peach. I do want to make sure that unlike the jail projects we've had to do, we've had a limit of, you know, $49,000 to go spend it get it. <coughs> we don't want to do that with... The, the, the gun range, the, the building itself, because we're going to need to put some flooring inside it eventually, but sooner or later, <coughs> because of the way you, you've seen what it looks like. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't need to be carpeted, everything, something just going to be real easy to clean, sweep out. And, uh, Absolutely. Like that. so that's, that's all. So, a dollar amounts is what y'all have to decide what we're going to do and who's going to be able to do that part. And we can't get inmates labor from the hallway. Is there air handler came with this facility? Yeah, central heat and air. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to get a vendor out there to put the ductwork back together because they separated everything into four different buildings and then they put them back together. So that's got to be all put back together yeah. and get the units We serviced. do need a, a vinyl flooring of some type to go. There's over. tile in there now, but where the uh, buildings were separated, there's a little trough and it's got a little board you put in it and you put the tile back on top of it. 
it's all busted up. The we, the we board and floating. yeah, floating floated out. out. Put you like twenty five year flooring. Yeah. Scratch real easy. It easy to clean. It, it doesn't spill. If you spill something on it, drop something on it. It doesn't eat it up yep. like wood. If you try to put some type of veneer wood down, yep. it's gonna eat it up. This stuff, you know, and you can put that in there. Fairly reasonable. It's not the most expensive thing out there by far, right. and right. it would last a no, long and, time. And that's what I'd found recently that the, that vinyl planks were a lot better than the uh, what we always considered linoleum. Mm -hmm. You know, it just has yeah. more life to it. Well, this is a little different than that. We it, can. I mean, it, it, it worked real well. Yeah, Commissioner Harvey, let's let's make a list. What what is it that we need to address today to get the wheels turning? I mean, what do you need to move forward? We're gonna get. Everything we just talked about. Okay. <laughs> but you've got an electrician, so you've yeah. got that handled. And we're going to talk to all Red about uh, helping us. We, we, and I have talked with them. I talked with them a week and a half ago. It's basically what are we want them to do. That's what are we going to try to have them to do. We don't mind it's going to be like painting, uh, maybe laying some of the flooring, a uh, little bit of carpet work, because they don't have their specialized, because the shorthanded job. They are shorthanded job. All across the state, 200 and something employees short. You don't have the guards to take a work. They don't have the guards to take yeah. the workers out, so they don't have the special ones. But they do have their maintenance crew. The warden, and I talked to the warden, he said, he said we will get y'all some help out there when that time comes. Just, we don't have specialized plumbers, electricians, uh, concrete guys. He said, but we got our maintenance Well, those are licensed guys. contractors. We, we would yeah, use I mean, licensed we, contractors for that. He's going to bring that crew out whenever we get everything settled. All we got to do is let them know. We need to let them build our porches, put our underpinning on. We get electricians to take care of that. Uh, let's just take it, those, just get those steps done first. Get the paps wrapped, get the bathroom built so that, you know, you can put the underpinning on most of the building, but you have to leave an opening for the plumber. Um, get all that stuff knocked out and get our porches built. That would be the priority thing right now, so we can pour our concrete sidewalks and stuff. And, and that's a deal. We we just need to know. Y'all want to give us? Are we going to have to go check the materials? Come back? Are y'all going to give us a budget to say, hey, this is what you got to have to do? What are we? Do we have a approximation of an ideal of what we're talking about here? Twenty thousand dollars. I haven't looked into that part of it. I would think be that much cosmetic wise. We know we got to put it in. Floyd the biggest, yeah. We're we're under budget today, as far as absolutely how our costs have been projected for the firing range. But I mean, fifteen thousand dollars, we could set that we could set that limit and then spend towards it, and at least we know that we're not out of the ballpark. I mean, you you have you got more work to do than that. Um, but they can come back and re well, sure. this. Yeah, we can. And, yeah. and then that way we don't have to we have just, a... We just need to keep something out in front and keep the wheels turning. Keep it keep it moving forward. Well, that's what we're doing. I mean, why do you think that we're not? I don't think that we're not. Well, oh, okay. I mean, Randy's just wanting... He's wanting direction as to... He don't want to go buy something for $500 and come back and find out well, that we didn't really want him to do that. So well, this, That's why he doesn't was, go buy anything until he talks to me first. Well, I know, but this just I mean, is come on. <laughs> Let's set a budget at twenty thousand for the completion of the floor, the underpinning, the, the and the porches, and the porches. ramps. Por well, yeah, the porches. Ramps, porches, bathrooms, yes. flooring. No, you no can't floor. put bathrooms in there. Flooring is. You're, you're looking at ramps, underpinning, plumbing, bumping that. So the. Get that the uh, the ceiling tile, the air conditioning, all that stuff is unknown at this time. Yeah. So it's not. All right. Let's let's do our list. Ramps and underpinning. Run, ramps and underpinning. And porches. 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 That will be our first three projects. Okay. We gotta, we gotta have a half wall in that bathroom. That's true. You gotta do the three quarter room. wall in that one room. Well, they're putting the other AD restroom. Because that's part the plans I've seen that Matt sent. There's a handicap uh, the, railing that's got a tag to that before they can place it. The room is so large, it's an office size room that they're wanting to put the bathroom in now. So that they don't have to build four new walls, they're only going to build one new wall and, and buy this 
office in half. Otherwise, to put the toilet, you'll have a 20 by 20 office. I mean, toilet, you know. Yeah, sure, which is a waste of space. Right, and so what, what we've drawn and given to them is dividing that toilet, that office, like in half. And so you've got a storage room and a toilet. Right. And Could so we say then ramp and porches underpinning and then the bathroom frame out? Yes. For the list mm -hmm. and approve that. And I think, Commissioner, you said a twenty thousand dollar budget. Yeah. Is that a is that a motion? Oh, okay. Now, are we also? Do we know how we're completing the interior of the uh, firing range and the material that's going to house the shooting the well, target right device? We're, we're mainly just talking about the building. Right now. The training. Right. I'll second that motion then. That's okay, we've got a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same side. And that'll pass 4 and 0. So we got, you got the list, Nancy. We're going to do ramp and porches, the underpinning, and then we're going to do the bath uh, frame out to get ready, ready for the plumbers. We're, before we do the underpinning, we're going to wrap the pipes up underneath the bottom. Just so. Well, right. We now that's just that? no. Just add that to the list, but yeah. you don't need to add any money no, to it. No, no. Add that to the list. Okay. Now we get that. That deals with the building. Now what? Uh, what? What's our next step? What's our other issues, Commissioner? Concrete entryway into the parking lot. Sidewalks. Landscaping. Well, um, the city of Wichita Falls did a landscaping project about an eighth of a mile from where we're doing our gun range. And they did uh, all natural, uh, drought resistant, big mound deal with no sprinkler system. I'm just wondering why they wouldn't let us do the same thing. Will, those, will the landscaping <laughs> in the parking lot have to be curbed? No. They won't. It can just be open. Well, it's a flat parking lot, but it has to have the islands in it with the with the right. landscaping. But they won't be curved. That That's correct. Okay. Makes it much simpler. Um, put right? irrigation sprinkler systems out there. On the berms, we planted all uh, drought-resistant plants. There's uh, seven different seeds in that, and it should come up uh, and not require hardly any water to maintain. My plan is in September of this year to go out to Texas Department of Highways and Public Transportation, or TxDOT, and get us some blue bonnet seed and, and cover those bones with blue bonnets. I think that'd be really pretty. Um, but the the Japanese, what are the, what's the name of them? Those trees that Matt said? Japanese something. I can't think of the name of it, but you can get them from the nurseries here in town. And we have some landscaping rock that would come out of the, where we dug the pit. The Commissioner Beecham went out and got some really nice looking landscaping rocks, huge. And we could, uh, is that again? Bonsai. Bonsai? No. No, that's a little bitty tree. Yeah, we're not talking about. Pistache? I think that is it. I think that is it. But anyway. Matt had some really good ideas on uh, drought resistant uh, landscaping. So I think if we do that, and then I think, I hope we don't have to put in a $20,000 sprinkler system. You know, so we'll work that out with the city. Yep. Yep. Have to negotiate with them on that. Um, That's about it. So do we, we're probably not to the point to approve the landscaping budget then, are we? No. Until we figure out where, which will be one of the last. Right. But That's right. they will not give your CO without it. Unless they give us a variance. Right. The thing is, though, we'll need to put the plumbing for the, if we are going to put the sprinkler system in before we do the parking lot. Too late. Parking lot's in. Oh, we're we going to chip it now. Yeah, but before we chip it, that's what I mean by end. Well, we'll go around the parking yeah. lot. We won't go under it. We'll just go on the edge with our, with our piping. It's not going to be a lot of piping on the roadside. There ain't that much dirt left in the fence. So we're not I encourage you. 
uh, all the commissioners to come out there and yeah. walk around and I at look it. at it. Pretty <laughs> good. It's come a long way in the last uh, couple of weeks. Absolutely. And we were so fortunate to get the berms protected before that event last week because it would have been a disaster. Yeah, it would have been bad. <laughs> we would have got to start over <laughs> after about a five-inch rain. Um, all right, what else do we need to address? That's it right now. There's plenty on our plate. I decided, but I don't know if the rest of them have. Sheriff, did you have some? Yeah, that's the that's the elephant in the room, obviously, is that the concrete, the firing lane, the firing range, the lanes itself, 25 yards forward, uh, versus uh, the asphalt. It's been a heated discussion on the middle left. Uh, uh, the judge recommended also the form between the building and the firing range, which is going to be a grassy area, uh, putting in that number, or what's it called, number six? Number six something, I guess it's, it's kind of a smaller rock that you would want to maintain. It's not a real heavy gravel, it's small, where it can be easy to maintain if you got any weeds trying to pop up through it. Uh, but the, uh, you still have a grassy area that between the, the building itself and the fire line in that area. Uh, put that number six gravel through there to keep all the grass down. We don't have to worry about the actual grass. That, that was the intention all along. Okay. From the building to the fire line. Right, to the fire line. Would, it's it's kind of like uh, chips. Right, it's right. real small gravel. Real small it packs out. It's level. It's not. It's easy to walk. You could actually roll a wheelchair over it if you right. wanted to. It's, it's not very like smooth. It's gray, but it's a little smaller. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fine for that area there. But the, I know this, the, uh, the actual fire line itself, where we stand and do our drills, have to run, kneel, squat, lay, roll. Prone the whole nine yards. That's the portion that we, from, an, from original planning, talk about doing that part in concrete, in asphalt, and everything else around where it needs to be. But that portion there, that's the, the point we don't know still, and we're still requesting it be. Well, the original planning that was going to be chip sealed. Okay. That was, meant, that was talked about, but I was my opinion about that. And this that well, right there about the and, and that's why we changed it from chip sealed to asphalt. And then Randy and Rob got it in their head. They wanted concrete. So they went politicking and asking for concrete. And the judge shut down the asphalt, because we was fixing to asphalt it, and got a bid. And the bid was 22500 bucks for 75 feet of concrete, which did not cover the entire um, firing range. There's still another 25 feet to get to the fire line. That, well, and that, You talk about the fire, the fire line itself would be covered. That other 25 feet would not cover before the rock would be shot. And they no. don't need concrete from that area back there. They don't need that, that Where you're talking about putting the small rock. No. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. The from the firing line, where the cover is, to the target, it's 100 feet, right? I think Just say right. No, no, just say That's been a misconception. And I don't know who draw the 50 yard firing line in. That was a 50 yard cover. Fire line's never been 50 yards. Fire line is 25 yards in. State requirements, 15 yards in, back to 25. State requirements. That's the fire line. I don't know whether Matt wrote that in there as a misconception that this is the fire line. What we said from our old range, we had a 25 yard covered area. We said move this back to 50 yard line. Get rid of that up where we shoot all the time. No pole, no nothing, in the way. At the 25. At the 25. Fire line is 25 yards in. That is your rank. 25 yards in. 25 yards to that 50 yard cover is open space. We do uh, qualify with rifles back to the 50 yard line. Will that misconception come in that the 50 yard line cover is the fire line? I have no earthly idea. Not we never said that. Our fire line is 25 yards in. We never said that. Whoever draw it, I'm not saying who draw it, who, who perceived <coughs> that was our fire line, that everybody keeps calling the fire line, that's not the fire line. That's a 50 yard cover. That's what that is. For people to go back and sit under when they're out there during the heat of the day and they're not on the line. We don't allow everybody on the fire line one time because of the safety reasons. That's where people sit preparing, getting ready, 
the range is controlled from there up here. You'll have 10 people on the line. You'll have two or three instructors up there making sure they don't turn around and shoot anybody. That can happen because we do qualify old retirees and old retailers. You do keep your hands on their weapons when they keep them from shooting you. <laughs> you know. Uh, they need to burn on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the con misconception was 50 yards is our fire line. It's not. 25 yards to the targets are fire line. That's our main 100% or 95% of it with our duty weapon. That's what we're going to shoot. So you don't shoot from where the awning is? No, and I don't know where that's come up. I mean, it keeps on fire line. That's not a fire line. Most place shootings are within actually 10 or 15 feet. Yeah. yeah, but we, we actually have to qualify 25 yards from different left hand, right hand dealing to get hit your target down range. Most everything, we shoot as close as three and a half or three, 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 three foot, foot quick draw and shoot. Quick, uh, no, no points. So you're going all the way from 25 to different points in between. 25, to 5, 10, 15, and 20. 91% uh, of your shootings are within three, three yards. Yeah. Because why? You walk up to a car. Or you walk up to a door, yeah. you're within a yard. And this has, will have uh, apparently some type of markings on it similar to base, a basketball court in order it'll to gauge those. It'll have 10 lanes drawn out on it and it'll have paper. Okay. And then we'll mark 3 yards, 7 yards, okay. 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 20, 25. That's, and that's you know, kind of like a checkerboard. Right. Looks like that, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. But the, this the here's the cover. That's the cover. But that's not the firing line. This right here was the beginning of it, back this way. For 7,800 bucks, we can cover this whole length from the target deal to the cover, okay, for $7,800 in asphalt, which is it's a lot better than chip seal. Um, I, I think uh, $22,500 this is just money wasted. Is it 22000 for the 50-yard fire range or 25? Nope. 25. 25. Well, That's still left this area here with us still to deal with. Right. Speaking with the judge, I know y'all heard him say he was in concrete business. Asphalt is just like the road. You have to drive and keep this stuff packed all the time. When it sits there in an environment like a gun range, it's not going to be packed all the time. So every time we go out there, it's going to be sticky, icky, kick it up and kick it apart. Whereas the concrete is going to be solid the entire life of that thing, unless you drive a bulldozer. We asphalt our roads all the time. Cars we asphalt, on, our, cars we asphalt our parking lots all the time. There are parking lots, Sheriff, out there that have been vacant for years, and you walk out there, they're not sticky. They're not gummy. I, guess this, I have seen the Vernon College Jill parking lot it's chip, it's chip seal. It's chip seal. seal. It's, it's chip seal. Totally different product. You go right out there in that street. That's asphalt. You can lay down on it, roll around on it, everything you want to do. Cars have to drive up and continue packing it down. Now, I'm telling you this is going to be half of the judge. The judge is in concrete business. He knows, I believe he knows what he's talking about. I think all of y'all understand it. Cars drive on the street, asphalt, not on a gun range. There's not going to be any more you know, I really believe that if you guys talk long enough, you can justify anything. And you're trying to justify wasting thousands of dollars. I don't, I don't get that. It's not wasting. <laughs> oh and I believe that I can be just as bullheaded as you can, Commissioner, and sit here all day long and enjoy it. Okay. I don't want to fight. We don't want to fight. We just know what we had. We spent 25 years of gun range that was chips in and asphalted. And it's still your, your your gun range was never asphalted. Okay, so if you're gonna if you're gonna argue and fight, tell the truth. Don't exaggerate. Well, I'm not I said don't exaggerate. So you sit there and make allegations like that. I'm not making an allegation. I'm just telling you right now, it was never asphalted. You had chip seal. It was terrible. It was sticky. This is a different product. That's what I'm trying to get through your head. You're not listening. Your head is what the judge has said about asphalt has to be driven on a park lots thing. This is not a dead burn driveway for cars. I know. So I, I don't I didn't come here to fight. I come here to, to make some sense to everybody. And just explain what we want. If y'all vote against it, I'm gonna walk out just to have the camper because we're gonna have a fire ring still. Okay? These guys will shoot in mud, water, snow, ice, 
whatever we, we have to get into. Okay. But in duration of the range, I think it's, it's better to pay it now than pay it later, just like our film. That's just my two cents about it. Thank you. So with respect to, to you and the court, I'm not here to fight with anybody. I don't like yelling and arguing, but I, I don't have a problem going toe-to-toe with anybody. But anything that I personally deeply believe that we should do now instead of doing it later. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. So with respect to court, whatever you all decided, if you decide now, decide in another month. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. But uh, Captain Ellis explained to me that the, the fire range back, the back portion itself must be delivered to banks so they start installing. So I know we're not going to be able to do anything up there now until they get back put in place. Is there a cement foundation footing yes. for this firing? Yep. And, we are, and we are going to yeah, complete, we are going to complete the, the floor and the firing range before the action target brings it in. Is there going to be a, a wall in front of the, where the target, target system is? Is there going to be a wall? Because at the, at the old range, we put, we had timbers, railroad ties going across to keep you from damaging anything on that, on that turn system. Believe it or not, sometimes it keeps you low. Blinda, doesn't that turn system already have a protection barrier yes. for the mechanism? Okay. It so it's going to be store bought instead of railroad ties. Oh, right. It doesn't? No, it's $80,000 if you want to buy that. We can call them happy ships. Yeah. I mean, it's $80,000. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't order that. How was it? Well, I just saw the brochure on it. It looked like no, it was protected. No, it does not have anything. They tell you, you either buy 500 steel to put out in front of it as a target barrier, or you put your own up. And I think that was one thing that's kicked out because it was eighty thousand. Yeah, well, sixty thousand. Cost that drove it up. Well, is that um, a has to be a wood material or? It can be wood, or it can be that steel box, steel to make protective things. Can it be a cement stem wall too? Cement, you're going to hit cement. I don't know why the steel or cement would be different, but you'd have to. It has to be. About three, about three, about three, about three half, two, two half. You know, to protect what it is, all that uh, air system, electronics, and stuff protect system is turning. So you're talking half inch blades. Five hundred steel. I mean, less half inch. Yeah. Well, it's I mean not not this thickness, but it's called five hundred. It's a it's a real it blister. It's alloy. It's alloy. Yeah. yeah. That's why we went with railroad ties at the other range because you going to have to sink concrete poles and weld everything together. Whereas we just we stacked them three high, I think it's three or four high. And you don't want to penetrate pen unless you're shooting three away. We don't we didn't shoot the uh, decision rifles at the twenty five yard range. It was all pistols or m fours. The last I heard we did not buy that protection system. I'm not seeing it in this list of things. I thought I think I must have seen it. Well that's a tremendous it, it savings. Was, it was on, it was tremendous savings. Eighty thousand in lieu of some railroad ties that eighty thousand. We yeah, can and get that's what we, <laughs> and that's what we said. Take this out. We don't need this big heavy steel. We're saving money, looking at saving money for the county. I guess well, is that that those timbers you would think would be better? They would be better because they have the, 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 the rounds yeah. in there and everything. And uh, you're not you don't have any uh, ricochets and stuff off of wood like you do off of metal or concrete. It absorbs a lot of coal. You know, it, it would absorb in there. Because all the all the duty round, all the practice rounds are around those, so those those they can skip. And and they're not they're not shot off like often. No. I mean, they actually shoot the targets, which are three yeah. foot up. It's just a, I mean, it's just a, it's an accidental deal. Yeah. 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 Those they're shooting shotguns also, double up bugs from different areas as they're approaching. So sometimes you're going to get around. It's going to hit. You, you, it doesn't. You can't, you can't control the well, pellets coming out. Yeah. And they're going to go forward within a span. Necessarily, 25 yards, they spread out pretty good. But I mean, and, that, and we did, we argued about that. Back well, I mean, hey, we don't need that. I mean, about it. I, I mean a consideration, about a consideration that $80,000, we're talking about a quarter of that expense to cement what's yeah. needing to be done. I told you, you talk long enough, you can justify it. Just keep talking. $80,000. Uh, store ball keep talking. wall is expensive. Let's put some marble. Let's put some marble around the bottom of it. <laughs> we, we we put it Folks, we're we're spending tax dollars 
And I'm glad that you saved $80,000 tax dollars, but I intend on spending or saving another $20,000 of tax dollars. This is not the Taj Mahal. Oh, no. you, you, you're going to shoot in the rain and the mud and the horse poop and everything else you just bragged about. That asphalt is a whole lot better than that, and it's 7800 bucks. So uh, that's my intent. If, if somebody wants to go spend 22500 bucks on concrete, have at it. I won't vote for it, and I will not be the project manager moving forward. You can you can do it yourself. If you're going to waste money like that, I don't want no part of it. You, you, I don't know get in about wasting money. Hey. I've been there 35, almost 35 years. I, can't I understand. Waste money. I've seen it before. I understand. So, you know, everybody's got their own little niche, what they want to do, do this and do that. So we don't care what we got there. However, if y'all do go for asphalt, I'm not going to be like you, Commissioner, get mad and want to walk off the job. I'm going to keep well, serving as your sheriff, and I'm going to keep going there and fire, fire rates like we do. I, I just think that somebody's got to stand up and stop the bleeding. Well, it's going to be better than you had, Jerry. That's for you sure. Lots, Lots better. <laughs> Lots better. Thank you. Thank you. The only other thing I would add is that, you know, email from Trinity Hughes that Dallas had sent. She had asked that, that the county have whatever surface material that be made out of be completed by June 1st and Action Target is scheduled to bring in and start their installation on June 12th. And is there a blueprint for the cement uh, Target foundation stuff? I mean, it's already built. Oh, it's, it's already it's there. That's done. It's okay. Done. Okay. That was and part of the base bid that was and the, maintained. The at least the conduit for the wiring's there? It's done. Yes. Oh, okay. Done. Good. The water point, and electricity. To okay. be able to complete and finish uh, they need the the install for action target is about a ten to twelve day install and they need to, to get that started. Uh, but before they get that started, they need the whatever surface be on the ground at that point. I do one. Are we good to go with that? If the weather, perhaps. Yeah. Takes care of it. Absolutely. Well, because the the only holdup at, that we're aware of at this time might be with Encore. Mm-hmm. On permanent but the power. main deal is that surfacing has to be done before June 1. Yes. Right? That's What's that's the Encore right. holdup, Glenda? <coughs> Coordination of the transformer. And Eric, the electrician, is working with them, trying to get it coordinated right so that he can get permanent power. Action. Action target yeah. requires, requires permanent power. We asked them if we could do a temporary power so they could have it all set up, check the function of it with temporary power, and they said no. So Eric is working with Encore to try to get permanent power before they're finished. If they start June 12th, they've got, like I said, 10 to 12 days before they're finished, they have to have permanent power. And I really think they want permanent power before they start. That's what they said. And Glenda, did y'all design the parking lots? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, we designed a complete full project. No, the parking lots north of the courthouse. Oh, these guys over here? Yes. And what was the reason we went with concrete and not paved asphalt? I mean, it would have been a third, or it would have, asphalt would have been a third of the cost of concrete, would it not Ultimately, have been? Ultimately, it's a longer lasting what happens to asphalt after the period of time? I mean, in the summers that we have, it, with vehicular traffic and stopping and starting of tires, it divots and, and rolls, and the heat it rolls, and and you have damage to asphalt that you have to reseal, retop, re. Now, and does that necessarily without traffic on it? wouldn't be our issue out there but will it separate or let weeds come through or i've not done a whole lot of asphalt without traffic that's not the closest thing <coughs> i can say is is a, a uh, 
track type of surface. Sometimes we'll do tracks, especially back in the day we used to do asphalt tracks and yeah, they get gummy and they get cracks and weeds come through them. That's why they produced and perfected a top coat, a rubberized rubberized thing oh, yeah. to put on top of, of tracks. No longer they don't make tracks out of asphalt anymore? Well, they actually oxidize over time is what happens and it degrades the product over a long period of time. It's not going to happen in a year or two. It's going to happen over a 10 or 15, 20 year period. You, you'll get some oxidization from the sun. And really the sun's the most brutal deal in our part of the country. Exactly. Glenn, have you ever seen a concrete parking lot with cracks all in it and grass running up to it? Cracks? Absolutely. Oh, really? Cracks it's going to crack in this part of the country. It's not if, it's, which is why they stress relieve it and, and saw it. Just keep that, talking. That's why they saw it. We're just going to keep talking. If we fog coat it, it, yeah. it won't oxidize exactly. for a while. We can come back at some later point and fog how do you it. How do you attend to that asphalt once you get it down? I mean, how do you service it? Like in five years, you come back and talk come and spray it. You spray it. Rubber coating on it. Fog, you fog it. Yeah, with with uh, some kind of hand device or yeah. it's got, you can do it either way. You yeah, can do it on the truck or well, you can't get a truck in there once we put our shed back without yeah, cutting it all it. down again, right? Do it with a hand one, yeah. Which they do. I mean, yeah, you put there are various sealers that can go on it. I, I just don't want to do. I just don't want us to do something that has a temporary life to it that has to. Concrete has a temporary life. Done well. That that temporary life apparently is a lot longer than asphalt life, and that's the that's my only concern, I guess, is that we. So if we had to replace the asphalt in 20 years, uh, we could do it for 60 years. Replace that asphalt for 60 years for what we're going to put concrete in there for. It's a long time. Which means I'm not probably going to have to worry yeah. about it, but Willie Wall probably will. <laughs> <laughs> That's just ridiculous. All righty. Well, actually, unless we take action to change, I would assume it proceeds as, as planned. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Would that be your interpretation? Well, I mean, have we taken action to do anything? We've taken action to do the the, uh, the building work, but uh, nothing on the on the uh, the surface. The surface right now is asphalt, unless we vote to change it. That's, that's what he's saying. Well, I, I mean, I I didn't realize that was the way it was drafted. I thought it was drafted with concrete. No. When we, our original opinion, uh, when we had this discussion, is that we couldn't do concrete because of the ricochet deal. That was the original discussion. It had to be something softer than that. No, that we, we just yeah. we talked about that. that was, we don't know where that came from. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was part of the discussion. It came from somewhere. I don't you yeah, know, I know where it came it. from. But a lot of that has to do with where you're shooting from. And I assumed you were shooting under the canopy. Yeah. Shoot. Even if you shot four, you know, ten feet in front of you, you're going to ricochet, but it's going to be going down. I remember having that discussion, Sheriff. I don't know where it came from. I don't know. You know this been what two years ago? Three years. When when the plans were drawn in bed, it was bed with either Chips. asphalt or concrete. Chip seal. It was bed with either chip seal or asphalt. And we were going to do the chip seal because it was really cheap, and then we got to talk about it. And it's really right. It, in the summertime, that chip seal, all that oil comes through there, it makes a mess. Well, you get enough rock on it, it doesn't even do that. The chip seal, right. but it can't. But down on the gun range, down at the river bottom, Randy was telling me it was so bad that they had to go get sand and put it over the over the chip seal to soak up all the oil yeah. and then sweep the sand off, and the sand stayed stuck with oil, so I mean, it was a mess. So that's why we. Said yes, that, that is that is the case with chip seal. It can be. And it, it that's not gonna occur with asphalt. Mm -hmm. 
110 degree days, it's not going to be sticky or tacky, or we're not going to have to be doing that business. Jim? No. Not if we see them. In which that's the plan. All right, any other action to take on this? Hearing none, we'll move to item number eight. Discuss, consider, take action on bids for tree and shrub trimming around county facilities. Right now, Willie, help, help me out with this. We've got contracts for maintenance with a private company to do the courthouse, the juvenile center. Is that it, or is there more than that? Annex. Annex, right. They don't have a lot of grass over there, but they do have trees and shrubs. And the, what is the consideration, gentlemen? Who, who's, is this your item, Mr. Harvey, or no. did the judge put it on? Well, I think the discussion was is whether we could do it with our own labor. And, do you know what it's costing us, Willie, approximately a year to do that? Look back here on number eight. I don't have it. Yeah, you did. I have it. Okay. It's about a thousand a month for it. And this is over and above. This doesn't include it with inside there the maintenance of trees around the court. Trees, mainly the trees, vegetation around the juvenile center. But we always get some kind of pricing on that because it's over and above what we do in yeah. mowing. Our so, 12,000, Willie, that you're speaking of, that's the courthouse and the parking lot area and juvenile? <coughs> that's comprehensive <coughs> everything. That's mowing and the tree training? EMO. <coughs> the which one? EMO. EMO. Well, what are our capabilities to do it? Are we talking about doing it with inmate labor or... Well, no, Dino's give us a price here. I, I don't know what is in lieu of this price. It's $2,700 to do the, the trees over at Juvenile and around the courthouse. Or is that is there two separate prices, Willie? There's, there's two separate prices. The 2730 is around the courthouse, and then if you turn to the back, the Yopon Hollies over at the Juvenile System is an additional 1900 Well... I mean, is using our uh, inmate staff a possibility? I mean, that's 5000 bucks. We talked about that uh, with the sheriff, and we actually agreed that we were going to start doing that, and then we just didn't follow through with it and get with uh, Jason. I mean, Jason Shepard's crew, that's absolutely outstanding. Uh, we use those guys out on the county uh, roads when we need tree trimming and stuff. Those guys... Aren't, they're good, aren't they, Sheriff? They got all the equipment. They are good. Well, are they doing the mowing now? Mm -hmm. The uh, mowing at the courthouse? No. No, Dino is. Dino is. No, yeah. He, that's what Willie said, $12,000 yeah. a year. Yeah, okay. And the, and the, and the trimming is separate from that. That's the right. yeah. Don't you think, Sheriff, that if we just got with Jason, that if we're, we needed some trees trimmed up here? He's already been up here about a month ago. There was a tree in the parking lot up front that the limb had grown way down and right. and Jason I called Jason he came over there and just, this sucker was gone I mean yeah took care of that know, I think if we utilize you make labor for almost all of this some of that twelve thousand dollar also would be a big savings you could put probably just a, a couple thousand of that back toward uh, some fuel yeah. or equipment expenses well and cheeseburgers well, you, they're gonna eat, they're those gonna guys will there. work their self to death if they can get a cheeseburger so, I mean, there needs to be some money in that for Jason to buy those guys lunch. Well, they, they do an excellent job. We've got the equipment to do it. And, and yeah. We're able to fund that uh, through the tension fund because the inmates are using it. And, they're, and some of these guys, they go out and get jobs, and they tell, they'll tell us, I've learned more things working with this crew than I thought I could ever, ever would. You know, like, I could do something. So that's the good thing about it. So what, what do we need to do, gentlemen? What's your pleasure? Well, let's try to move to inmate labor if at all possible. We know what Dino's going to cost us if we have to call him on the job and give us, I mean, if 
we wanted to entertain a, another price or two, we certainly could, but the, the inmates are going to be able to do it. Uh, I certainly would hope that maybe that if this does take off, that we cross that equator behind the atrium building going towards the annex. All coming down by the atrium building, all those trees look like they come off the cover of better homes and garden. And all my shrubs look like looks like little Johnny with a bad with a bad flat top. What are those? I thought Tommy? you said you had some edge trimmers at home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tommy, are those our trees, or are those the city trees, or? The city's for sure. Responsible. Yeah. Do we water? <laughs> we did, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm, just, I'm just saying that mine are completely yeah. they shaggy. Won't the, they won't make the cover of Better Homes and Gardens. Yeah. And it's really, I mean, don't get me wrong, the atrium is private sector, and they yeah. do a very good job of that. But when you cross that alley going east, it, it, it gets a little rough pretty quick going into to South America. Well, the JJAEP building needs some work done, too. Sir, you ever had a bad it. flat top bleed? I have. That's why I wear a toupee. I've had two or three bags. Well, Sheriff, sure, you'd let us know uh, of some type of proposal for those services. I mean, you I, you may have to acquire or lease some equipment, chainsaw or whatever the case be, I guess. Well, they have a lot of that. We've got here, almost everything we need. Just, uh, ladders is the biggest problem. We don't like having inmates with a lot of ladders on. But <laughs> Sheriff, I don't know if Jason does have the pole hedge trimmers. You know the pole saws. No, no pole saws. He's got that, but the hedge trimmer deal. The he can get it. I, I think they're like four or five hundred bucks a piece. We can buy Jason a couple of two or three pairs of those. We, we can get that with funds that we utilize to buy all the equipment inmates to use. Okay. Well, what do we need to do to proceed? I guess it's the I guess we really need to get with Jason and see yeah. what his schedule is. Does well, it allow? What we want to do is be able to set up on a schedule. Barry, he does, he does a lot of the other. Are we under contract? If if you want to change the vegetation contract, I think it goes through the end of the year, so you'd have to plan on January first <coughs> to change to the inmate, and then That's give not a month, give a month the con and Dino? give the contractor. Notice that you we won't renew, but it's certainly okay to. Yeah. You're but it's okay to do the tree. Oh yeah, the trees. Trees separate. Okay. Yeah. And and I would suggest them. that on some of that equipment, especially at once a year, if that usage, to lease some of that stuff from uh, the deal instead of going and buying a four or five hundred dollar piece of equipment that you Where can you rent for from? fifty bucks. From where? I use that bunch at Kemp and Kale right there. I just got a big chainsaw from them this weekend and worked it all weekend long. Oh, Grand Junction? Yeah, what Grand. used to be Grand Junction, a bigger company has bought them now, but they have all that. They have all this stuff? Yard man, or lineman uh, equipment well, and tools. It's a specialty deal. Like a specialty that thing that you're not going to be using because after you set it a year and then try to use it, it won't start anyway. So, but if I'd he rather, keeps if he keeps the Opon Hollies, yeah, if he's done, it, it'll be something he'll time, use. That's a he'll different trim. story. Yeah, you'll need yeah. a trimmer. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we went, we're on that. <laughs> really, all we're talking about in this is trees, this is tree, and, and, and shrub trimming. We'll look at the rest of it at a later date. Mm -hmm. But you're correct. We do need to, to talk with them. And, we also, and we need to, we probably need to start them over at JJAEP. There's some work to be done over there, yep. but so anyway. Uh, we need to take action. We've discussed. I think we take no action. Take no action and move him in that direction to do the trees and shrubs. Or get with Jason anyway. Yeah. Get a proposal worked up and see what it would take. That brings us down to public comments. Anybody from the public? Yes, sir. Uh, Thursday, I took Wednesday, we had a uh, detention officer that worked for us uh, part-time. He worked full-time with the prison, his two-year child was less than retired. His name was James uh, Witt. Uh, he was a boy by Witt. He uh, was killed in a motorcycle accident on River Road at the uh, east end at the curb near by Sturmerdale. Uh, we had a report of a motorcycle accident. We got out there, deputies got out there, and I got there just short around the deputies. And it was almost 5 o'clock on Wednesday. And uh, he had a, luckily there was a witness that saw it happen. He got into the gravel and some gravel in the curb. And he went too fast and got into the ditch and flipped over. 
top of it. There was a big bike he had, a big, big Harley. And uh, a CPR, people started CPR immediately to try to keep it breathing. And uh, when AMR got there, they launched Air back to come out as well. But unfortunately, he uh, passed away at the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, services are, are set for tomorrow, I think at 11, at the Lamar Baptist Church. And there's going to be a, a honor guard for the prison system and the sheriff's office honor guard for the casket detail. And then the third one's going to be, I believe it, Christy, I'll find out for sure. What's the date on that again? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. At uh, uh, Lamar. Lamar, Lamar Baptist. Lamar. And he was a, a exceptional, uh, you know, he was part-time, but he really touched a lot of our newer and younger attention officers' lives because he, he taught them how to be able to talk with inmates and de-escalate a lot of things. And he was one of the kind of good guys that was, everybody liked him. No one had a bad thing to say about him. He was always there. I always want to tell you to help you do something different, show you things to do a little easier. But he also just, uh, uh, he's got three kids. The youngest one's eight years old, and the older uh, son and daughter are in their 20s. But it was just a uh, real tragedy. Is he from Burke? Uh, I don't know if he's from Burke. You know, Whit's not a very common name. No. And we had a, a young man in uh, in uh, FFA and 4-H over in uh, Burke. I, I think I know this man. He's, 40, he's 48. I think I think. I do know him. He lived on Connolly. So it was a, just a real shock to see something like that. W-I-T-T? -T? Do you remember the Whit kid from yeah. Burke? Yeah, yeah his, last name, think... his last name was Davis. I'm sorry, his last name was Davis. Oh, yeah. Davis. I got, I got to his middle name. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, last name is Davis. Yeah, his last name okay. Was this okay. kid's last name was Whit, I was going to say. So it's a, it's a, it's a real... Uh, He's been working for a little while, but uh, he was uh, well liked in the prison as well. The prison people had nothing good to say about the man. He said that he was just a couple years uh, shy of retirement, less than two years. It just uh, kills the show. You don't know when things going to happen, how fast it can happen, and just appreciate life. And just the blessing we give to the Lord. This time it's our time. We live every day. Storm damage, sure. we know we got some up on the hell damage of things up on the North Mile Park area. Uh, Benson Road's the clothes off with the flooding. I think we're supposed to have another round tonight. I don't know if it's going to be as bad as we got Friday night. Did you notice the river? At the, did you notice the river at the falls? No, I haven't had a cross. If we do so. have another round, we're primed for some, some bad things. Creek, I know, was, was out of banks. It was up like 28, 27 foot. It was over at Flood's uh, Flood's Cake over the weekend. It was supposed to crest. It may crash, but there's, I think the rest of the week we got a chance for more rain and more storms. So that's what happens. Can you tell them about electric? Uh, the tornado? The, no, the electricity, yeah. Electricity, yeah. Electric still, I don't know how much part of electric still out of electricity. The majority's back up. Yeah. The majority back mm -hmm. on. Uh, we, did, we did have reports of the tornado. I don't know if anyone actually got to see it. I think the fire department got to see it. Uh, but, I mean, the tornado did touch down. I don't know how big it was. There's enough to pull on falls down and falls, flip in, and uh, I think there's high, high transport. There's high it was high big high tower high deals. High yeah. There's about five of them that's just watered up in a ball. Yeah, took, took them all down. So it's a, there was significant damage. And, uh, fortunately, that's all it got. Didn't get houses or land in a more populated area or not hit the town. Those of us who lived in 1979 know exactly what it's like to be living through something like that. Everything changes. The operations of the Cities, counties, everything changes the focus of the recovery and that kind of situation. And Sheriff, your guys were instrumental Friday night. They, I'd received a call from dispatch. Your uh, deputies had found some water rising on us, so bar wise, and some roads that we had not uh, closed or marked uh, right. with high water. And so, uh, Tex Dot and Precinct Four as well were out there and did it in. in uh, Approached on 240 as well, so it didn't. It was short lived, but I mean they were paying attention and got right on the ball and, and got there, that done. We know the high, the, the danger area, so they'll start hitting them places right off the bat. So they'll know immediately. They may need to get the barricades up now because you know 240 is so dangerous. But at night time, that water's crossing the road, you come across a rise, and you're doing 65, and next thing you know, you're, you'll be upside down. Yeah, and we've still got some uh, damage due to. 
the some water as well as still have some water and so we've got some of that north of pumpkin center closed there are some strips closed because of that and the culvert or two has washed out on us so they had extensive rain i had three and a half inches north of park that's roughly what we had to close uh, thanks sir anybody else comments commissioners Oh, I certainly want to thank uh, the public on behalf of the board of directors for the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. We had three days worth of great events. And I had probably 400 in attendance at our induction banquet uh, Saturday night that was held at the new warehouse. And Keith and Steve have uh, remodeled next to me to a phenomenal venue. If you haven't had a chance, go see it. Wow. I think occupancy on that is probably well over a thousand. So I think it's really wonderful. Wow. Oh, oh yes. yes. Wow. But Tom. A big brick warehouse just <coughs> yeah. they bought that and completely remodeled it. I mean, it's a two tier system, phenomenal. Where are they going to park a thousand people? <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, Lee, but I mean, yeah, yeah, oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> great facility, great facility. I mean, I've done a great job on it. It's certainly going to be a major venue here in the Wichita Falls area, there's no doubt about it. But uh, appreciate everybody's support. Rain, rain didn't do us a lot of good Friday night. We moved the rest into the inside. Farmers market and still drew a good crowd, but it, it knocked out our fair weather crowd. But uh, the comedy show was good, and our induction ceremony Saturday night was heavily attended. Tom, there was a lot of hype over the the wrestling on Friday. I mean, that a lot of people were talking about it, talking about going. Of course, some weather did play a role, but it was more so than I've ever noticed in the past. I didn't know. Was, was you wrestling? I wrestled David on an as needed basis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not the duration that I did 25 years ago. We we had Cajun Fest the weekend before, and one of the professional wrestlers had a booth at, at Cajun Fest. He was selling something, but he was a hoot. Now, it's Tommy the Tax Assassin, isn't it? Tax Assassin. I have several. Aliases. You can abbreviate that to fashion and you get you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beecham, you got anything? I'm good, thank you. Well, you've said enough, so. I will. Um, I received a text message from Matt, who is in Chicago. He said that there is a electrical change order that uh, I thought that he had sent it to y'all. I'm not sure where it is. I just saw that. Is. It's like for $520 yeah. for to, to, I don't know if that needs approved in, what we're looking at. or if it's under a limit that doesn't need to be approved in. It, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. Uh, we can still put it on the agenda for next week, but okay. it's, it's a nominal. Okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, $520 yeah. is the... Yeah, I have it right here. Okay. Commissioner okay. Watts? Uh, <laughs> we, I, I was just going to... To comment over a, a lecture and the happenings out there over the weekend, and I know they're uh, they were proud to get most of that back up and running. Tommy had also uh, identified that uh, our internet and such was back on as well, so uh, we're glad to have that. And it did cause us a little problem on Friday, but it wasn't anything that could come around for whatever reason, the backup generator at Precinct 4 didn't want to cooperate. And so uh, we'll have that. In the past, it's been great and been able to support us there, as we, but hopefully we can figure out what the, the, glitch, the was. glitch was in that. But that was uh, about the extent of that. Steve did a great job, city manager there at Electra, keeping everyone informed and, and uh, up to date on what the uh, Southwest Rural Electric was telling him and posting him, so those guys worked uh, for about 48 hours diligently trying to get that uh, power back up that's coming out of Oklahoma to Electra. So. And then Nancy has the posting of these closures, and we'll get those out to everyone. We, and, the, and the sheriff made an excellent point. We pretty well know where our water problems are going to be, mm -hmm. so our crew was out. Friday afternoon, pre-staging barricades. We've got for now. We can pre-stage that stuff. That way, when the time comes, all you got to do is shoot out there and put them in place. And so they got everything pre-staged and ready to go. And and uh, 
those uh, those precinct guys do a good job of taking care of that. And then I know Jerry was out all weekend as the other foreman were kind of just checking, making sure that we had things covered. So uh, ready to go. But yeah, we need to watch the weather the rest of the week. With everything full and charged up now, it won't take a whole lot to, uh, to make things happen. Anybody else? Real quick on Matt's email, it, yep. uh, Deb Stevens, it says that the county needs to get with the Encore to set up an account so that we'll be able to get them out there when we are ready. Good luck. Who, 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 would we, who do we talk to? Is that an auditor's office account set up deal or is that somebody else? Well, don't we, don't Direct Energy set that up for us back through Encore once we make the request? That's how it works. That's how I did service provider at Burnett, and then let them do it. Yeah. Uh, do you Andrea have help me with the Burnett Park deal for those? Can you call Andrea for us? Mm -hmm. See if she can meet with us or yeah, whatever. So we have exact address for that location. Has 911 get assigned an address to that? Sheriff. We may need to to yeah. get Gary I'm, on I'm going Billy Ray Mice works over there and he actually does that. Okay. Anything else? It's 11.36 and we're just... No, we have to do that. We have to recess because there is a work session. Oh, do what now? Oh, we're going to recess. Okay. We'll recess till 1.30? Yes. Okay. Recess till 1.30.